Hello, what is up guys? I've got something to talk about. I'm a big Dark Souls fan. Picked up the board game, obviously. Back the third edition Kickstarter for the Dark Souls Beyond the Grave. I got the Dark Souls design works for one and two. I really like Dark Souls. When this game got put on Kickstarter, I immediately backed it, which was a shame because I didn't enjoy this game. It has a lot of problems with it. Namely, it is way too long. It's very grindy and some of the immediate house rules that we started using were to basically double the number of experience that you got or souls and reduce the number of bonfires that you had. So essentially cut the game in half. It says on the box it's 90 to 120 minutes, but Oftentimes we would spend two hours before even making it to the first boss and there's there's more There's that first boss then the main boss and then the game's over. There was also a Campaign mode which I never tried because that seemed awful You can buy more Resets essentially uh, if you know Dark Souls, there's bonfires You can buy more bonfires and just never, the game will never be over. Another thing that I didn't like was the best gear was very specific. And the way the treasure system worked, you had a, a giant stack of loot and you would spend a soul and buy the top card of that treasure deck. You would just spend your souls to rip through that deck until you found your class specific items. Now there were a few occasional times when you didn't want those for certain boss setups, but most of the time the class specific gear that each class brought into them, hey, if you're playing with the rogue, then you put the rogue cards into the, the treasure deck. If you're playing with the warrior, you put his cards in there. Most of the time those were the best at each kind of tier uh, that you could go to, so it made the loadouts as you move towards the end game, once you had a lot of that treasure deck and your experience was was high and your characters were kind of good, it made that end game kind of stale. Okay, I always want this loadout, and if it's a magic boss, then I'll swap out my shield if you're the warrior. Okay, I always want this loadout, and I always want this loadout, and this loadout. These are mathematically the best items. Okay, the legendary deck brought in the, the two-handed one, so I'm gonna swap that out, whatever. I was super intrigued and happy that I got it, and then the first time I played it, I remember texting my buddy and saying, I don't think I like this game. And I played it four or five more times, and still not too happy with it. But, I might be one of the last ones to get this, because I think actually in the Kickstarter, uh, I was on that last uh, email list where they pushed them out. This is all the add-ons that I bought. I want to do a little unboxing and go through these and see if they make a difference. So there's different bosses, dungeon tiles, character classes, more loot, more invaders. There's a bunch of stuff here. I want to see what my thoughts are. This box is huge. Okay. So let's do this just one at a time, I guess. Okay. So the first one I pulled out, the Four Kings expansion. Okay. Let's see. You normally have a mini boss and the main boss, and that was it. These expansions are adding in mega bosses, so an extra step further to, to go through. Introduction. Yeah, this tile is just black. Set up after the main boss. Level four encounter card. Mega boss encounters. After successfully navigating a level four encounter, a mega boss lies in wake. They're the final test of a party. Often mega bosses have more health than main bosses and their attacks can prove even more devastating. Custom game element, royal summons, instead of picking up from the discard pile, one through four, the party must defeat all four of the ancient kings, Call of the abyss, campaign scenarios. All right, our little punch outs here. Fortunately, this one <laughs> looks a little messed up. Uh, these look like you put them at the base. Here's our game board. That's kind of what you get. Looks like the eh, the sewers on that, and then the back is just black. We've got our Four Kings cards here, our treasure bequeathed 
Lord Souls, one, two, three, four, five, different languages. Tier three for each of your stats is 40 while you have this card equipped. A new legendary loot. So here is one of the figures. Four arcs there, robes flowing out everywhere, the sword here. But unfortunately, it's just the same model four times. These guys are identical. I, hmm. I mean, the robe height there is different. This one's a little higher, that one's touching the base, but I think that's probably a flaw. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the cape is different there with this. Maybe I spoke, maybe it's just slotted differently. I don't know. Hmm. Overall, it looks to be the same. Well, I mean, this piece goes up. This one is bent. I don't, hmm. They're definitely not. They're definitely not distinguished, right? It's kind of the same. Overall, it's kind of the same piece. That's a little unfortunate. Guardian Dragon Expansion. So far, <clears throat> there hasn't been anything wholly different, maybe when I read the, the rules for them, but I'm looking for, in some of the other packs that I have for characters or summons, Something that changes the way the game plays. Uh, it's kind of the biggest thing that I'm interested in. Set up after the main boss. Level four encounters, custom game elements. So each one has their own uh, custom rules. There's one side of it. And the other side of it. Dark Souls 3 boss here. Trackers. Health and data cards. And one piece of loot. No, there's two. We've got the Drake Wing Ultra Greatsword. And a Spitfire Spear. Not sure what that little icon is right there. I'm not sure what that is. This is the first one that has required any assembly at all. I'm not even sure if you need glue, but let's see. There's our guardian dragon. Pretty good detail on it. Every scale is, is listed there. That's pretty good. And our two wings. Okay. Hmm. Well, this does not fit very well. Is there a particular way I need to put that in? No. Try the other one. Hmm. Might require a little more force, but oh, these are not shaved very well. Anyway, okay. Calamite. Got the book here. His custom rules, rules for campaign, same, same stuff. Okay, the the forest. All right, more of the, more of the same thing. This black dragon. Let's check out the loot. Obsidian. This has a lot more. Unless they're just different. Oh, it's just different languages. Okay, obsidian great sword. Calamity Ring. You suffer minus one success on each block, resist, and dodge roll, but gain plus one success on each attack roll. And then repeated. Okay, I guess that's one way 
I can't say I'm interested in replaying a four hour game just to fight some of these guys. Not the horns there. It's pretty cool. There's still a lot of flash on these. They're not shaved. Calamite. Uh, okay, and his claw here is just doing weird stuff. I'm not sure why that's like that. This pose is not the greatest. There's no action going on here, and the, the joins here are pretty bad. Hmm. I'm not too impressed with this mini and our two kind of push fit wings. All right, so actually this is not even everything because I thought some of the character stuff would be out by now, but it is not. Boom. I thought like the character summons and the new character classes and all that stuff would be out by now, but unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case. It's just these mega bosses. Gaping dragon, more rules, what kind of concept art there. What? That's okay. That's a horrible resolution there. Ornstein and small. You got his dungeon tiles. This is where he actually shows up. This looks like, yeah, part of the sewer. Okay. Oh, he has a new little token here, green. Acid, kind of looks like spit, poison. That stuff he shoots out. And again, these are different languages, just these two. Blighttown Key. You may look at face down encounter cards. Dragon King Great Axe. That's interesting. Huh, kind of different. Oh wow, this guy's a lot of parts. Uh, the other thing that was very confusing to me was the game's over once you beat the main boss. So why do you need the loot? Like I get they should have loot, but you never equip them. Uh, I mean, unless you did the campaign mode, right? You, the game was over as soon as you beat the main boss and presumably once you kill one of the mega bosses, the game's over. So, unless you do the campaign mode, you're never going to use their their gear. Actually, that should be more like that. Uh, okay, yeah, this join here in the middle is awful. Oof. That's not even... I don't even know how to fix that. It's not like I can unglue the thing they glued. Oh man. Uh, it looks pretty cool though. I love the maw there. His head back. His tail is going to be huge. Yeah, this makes the model huge. Uh, hmm. Okay, so it does wrap up a little bit, but. Still, this thing is ridiculous. Wow, okay. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, the Asylum Demon. This one is a much smaller box. Maybe doing some kind of just boss rush mode where you don't have to do the whole game. Uh, he is a mega boss, okay. More mega bosses. Um, these little tokens. Not sure what those are. Should have read the rules. Okay. Ah, he plays them there. I guess he smashes the pillars, and maybe you can use them as cover, possibly. Mm hmm. Hmm different iconography there than in the base game. Let's look through his loot. Demon's Great Hammer and a big Pilgrim's Key. 
You may place this character on any entry node, not just entry nodes, aligned with the tile you moved from. And during your activation, you may discard this card to end an encounter and return to the bonfire tile. Got some titanite, which is not in Big Pilgrim's Key. There we go. Weapons attack, gain plus one damage. Different color for it, but okay. Okay. This one's a little better. A lot of etching. A little butt there. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Nice. Old Iron King. I'm wondering what his model is going to look like. Because you only ever saw his top half. I'm assuming you have to do that, but does he like... This one I'm interested in. So in the game, you were on a platform surrounded by lava, and this guy came out of the lava. Uh, but the way the tiles are, I don't even want to look at the back, because I don't want to spoil it. Okay. Uh, but the way the tiles are would require him to move around, right? Unless he just appears at the edge. Let's see what they did with it. Okay. All right. A little low res piece of artwork. Okay. So there's his board surrounded by lava, looks like, and he'll appear on one of these three nodes there. Okay. All right. And you use this as an encounter, I guess. There you go. Just concerned with the loot because I don't want to actually spoil myself for their attacks. The Iron King Hammer. Blinding Bolt. All five attacks must target enemies in the same node. And then, okay. Wings in one piece. And the king himself. Not much to talk about on this one. Not, not a holy super interesting model be fun to paint them but hmm. all right okay here we go let's see what this bad boy brings to the table so this should not be a boss this might be just a bunch of tiles in which case I'll be sad. All right. Dark Souls the card game. Ooh, okay. Bunch of new enemy. Ooh, shit. Great Grey Wolf Sif, Artorias. Dark Root Expansion, again with the super low res artwork, I don't know if you can even, it looks pixelated, it is very pixelated, that's awful. Yeah, I get some concept artwork in there or something. Nice. I'm excited. Okay. The start of the game, players can choose to use the expansion treasure cards instead of some of the core game's treasure cards. Okay. Using Artorias uh, offers a new main boss option. Sif is a main boss as well. Cards. All right, there's a lot of 
stuff in here. Okay, we've got encounters. A lot of different encounters from three, two, and one. No mega bosses, so no level fours. Rotten Groove Spear. Stone Great Sword. Great Sword of Artorias. Cursed Great Sword of Artorias. Uh, it just has lower stats. Hmm. I feel like the cursed. Hmm. So. The Cursed Great Sword of Artorias is just worse. Statistically, it's just worse. Um, and, I mean, it has lower stats, but that's interesting because in the game it actually did something different. I feel like it was based off your health or something. I can't remember it, but it, they weren't. They didn't use the same stat for for damage. There was a reason to use one or the other. This weapon's attack deals zero damage. You may flip your luck token to the ready side. Interesting. Another ember, the great shield of Artorias, the abyss great sword, German, dusk crown ring. Did I already look at that? Yeah. Cool. You all know who I'm mainly focused on. Guardians. The blade, two of them, two with hammers. Okay. One little big shroom doom guy. Small one. And a bunch of these. I wonder if they pop out of the ground. Pitchforks. And three with pitchforks. Three with the shears. No, these are the guys that pop out of the ground. Sorry. Pretty cool model. Not, not glued in very well. Okay, here we go. All right, well, his sword is bent. It's unfortunate, you can fix that pretty easily though. Gmail and it kind of flops there. It's not actually glued to him, which you would think it would be there, the way they have it posed. All right, pretty cool model, pretty cool model. Let's check out the wolf. Fur does not look the greatest. Not that much detail on it. Um, it's rock. Also, doesn't look the best. There's not a lot of detail on the rock. Okay. There's the face. Yeah, the sword is bent. But again, you can, you can uh, fix that. Cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much different in the base gameplay of it, which is the problem that I had. These mega bosses, while cool, I'm not going to play a four hour game just to fight them once, uh, which would leave me with like a boss rush type mode. Um, you know, I mean, I guess you could do that, just gear out your people and then fight them. But I kind of like the, the story and the lead up to those bosses, but there's no gameplay changes. I thought the Dark Root expansion would have a little more than it did. New tiles, a bunch of new enemies, a bunch of new treasure, but there's no new classes, there's no magic class, um, there's not a change in the rules or anything like that. Uh, maybe a different expansion. 
I know I have a lot more summons, invaders, new character classes, pyromancer, all that stuff is still coming. But I guess I was expecting a little m more. Maybe I didn't properly read through what I got, but here's all the mega bosses and the dark root one. So I guess the character stuff is coming later. I would really like a revised rule book. I don't think that's actually feasible. I don't think they're going to do that, but yeah, having to house rule so much in a game is kind of disheartening. And while I'm glad that I have it all, just because I'm a collector, I, to be honest, I can't see myself actually playing through all of this stuff. So yeah, hopefully later we'll get a new rule book or people on BGG are going to post some killer stuff and it'll make me more excited to play through this game. But as it is now, meh. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know uh, what your thoughts are on Dark Souls. If you played it, if you got your Kickstarter stuff, if this makes you excited for it, if it kind of turns you off from it, what you thought of the, the miniatures that came in there. Um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it as mine are kind of ambivalent to not impressed. Take it easy. I will catch you later. Bye.